Saturday night, baby. That's when everything will go down. The Vancouver Canucks and the Oilers will play on Saturday in the most important game of the year for both of these teams up to this point. The reason I say that is because today, on Wednesday night, not only did you have the Edmonton Oilers defeat the Vegas Golden Knights 5-1, absolutely stomping on Vegas without Connor McDavid, but you had Vancouver lose in overtime 4-3 to the Arizona Coyotes in a game that I'm going to say was the most thrilling, entertaining, and heart-stopping game for Vancouver all year. I kind of had like an out-of-body experience watching this game, just going through the motions, the highs and the lows, the ups and the downs. You know how they say that life is not worth living until you exhibit all the emotions available to you? Yeah, this was one of those games that had that at your fingertips. The Canucks ultimately lose, but they walk out of this game with a loser point, and it's a loser point that they very much deserved, because when you watch some of the tape and you look at some of the chances, the Vancouver Canucks, at one point in this game, when they were losing by two, they had like a 90% deserve to win meter rating on the moneypuck.com website. The Canucks absolutely dominated in terms of offensive opportunities and zone time, but the Arizona Coyotes squeak away with the victory here. And the fact that the Canucks got the loser point is a good result. But the fact also that the Vancouver Canucks could not muster up any shots on goal, nevertheless any goals per se, after having all this zone time and offensive looks, that was concerning. Arthur Seelobs wasn't making the saves that he needed to make. And this very quickly became a frustrating game for Canucks fans before the Canucks striked back and tied this one up in the third period. So let's go over the tail of the tape here heading into tonight's game. Elias Lindholm came back into the lineup. So did Phil DiGiuseppe. We had talked about this in the video earlier this morning. And we had also talked about how Artur Silovs got himself the start. So no Demko, no DeSmith. And the Arizona Coyotes, who played yesterday, were coming here into Vancouver on the second half of a back-to-back. -back. Maybe they're tired, maybe they're not. Canucks should be able to beat these guys, right? The Canucks, though, at the end of the first period, had two power plays, did not convert on either of them. The second one, in particular, looked really good. Great movement, but they're not able to score. Arizona, though, gets themselves a power play at the end of the first period. It's a Myers interference and Josh Doan penalty. Honestly, really rough call to see be made. Myers probably did not deserve that one. It's just because he's big that he got that call against him. It bled into the second period. The Canucks were able to kill this off. But despite the fact that the Canucks had themselves some good shifts, lots of chances from Tyler Myers, JT Miller, and Connor Garland, it's Josh Brown who scores to make it 1-0. This is about six minutes into the second period. Long shot and a huge rebound goes off of Seelovs and off to the side where Brown just puts it in the back of the net. Not really a goal that you like to see from a rebound management perspective. Seelovs has got to find a way to be able to keep those pucks closer to him when they get fired on goal. And as that second period continued, the Canucks just kept on piling on with more zone time and more offensive looks. I'm not going to say offensive chances necessarily, because the odd part about this game was... During the time the Canucks were trying to battle back and get into the game and tie things up, they didn't really force Connor Ingram to make too many highlight reel spectacular saves. The Canucks had a lot of shot attempts, but they got blocked and they kept on getting deflected off to the side, they missed the net a bunch, and like, even though territorially and in terms of the puck crispiness passing in front, the Canucks were able to dominate this game, they didn't have too many grade A saves against them that Connor Ingram had to make. It was more so just, hey, they got the looks, but they didn't pull the trigger properly. And this continued until, with a minute 28 to go, JT Miller scores on a rebound to tie the game 1-1. Hughes goes over to Myers, who takes the long slap shot, the rebound loose in front, and Miller puts it in. But that tie game is not lived on for long, because with 30 seconds to go in the second period, 
the coyote score. It's Kolyatrinok who takes a long drive from the point. It goes through like four people. Artur Silovs is screened to all hell, but he cannot see it at all. He doesn't even move. He's just standing there like a scarecrow. Puck goes right by him. He doesn't even realize it's in the net until the coyotes are celebrating. Two to one goal. It's frustrating to watch because it's an absolute floater of a shot. In the third period, this is when things get crazy because the Coyotes score a minute 55 into the third period to make it three to one. It's Dylan Genther. And this one, honestly, it's on Quinn Hughes. He has the puck behind the Canucks goal line. It's Logan Cooley who strips Hughes of the puck clean. Big bad turnover. Cooley centers it over to Gunther in front, and he scores, making it 3-1. to one. Just a bad goal here for Vancouver to give up. And ultimately, this is where the Canucks start getting a little bit undisciplined. Hoaglander took a penalty. Zadorov took a penalty. Myers got a cross-checking penalty. Penalties upon penalties upon penalties... This was frustrating because the Arizona Coyotes were getting their chances on these. You could debate the legitimacy of some of these calls. Teddy Bluger got a breakaway while shorthanded and it ended up on a five-hole shot that was stopped easy by Ingram. And ultimately, the Canucks, they spend like the first half of this period down 3-1 and shorthanded. The Coyotes were not able to capitalize, though. The Canucks killed off all of these penalties, including the five on three for 31 seconds. And with 8.42 to go in the third, Connor Garland scores. Finally, the Canucks send the pass over to Garland from behind the goal line. And Garland on the side is able to roof it. Top cheese. Quinn Hughes gets the assist here. So that's his second assist on the night and 90th point on the season. The Canucks, though, really start pouring it on. They get chances after chances after chances. The Canucks were going sicko mode. Hughes had a two-minute shift where he just absolutely took things in his own hands. And eventually, with three minutes to go, it's Kesselring who takes down Hoaglander, putting the Canucks on the power play, giving Vancouver a chance to tie this game. And they do. As Elias Pettersson has the puck on the right wing, he walks right in and just drives it either... Four hole or five hole, whichever one of the holes it went by in. I was kind of watching Pedersen the entire game thinking, hey, the guy's not shooting. Like he's having these opportunities and these looks at the net, but he's refusing to pull the trigger. What's up with that? But on the power play, assisted by Quinn Hughes, his third point of the night, by the way, Petey just takes it and scores. Easy goal. It's a 3-3 game. That is the end of the third period, and in overtime, things get even crazier because Besser took a penalty for tripping Dylan Genther. Chronic on the penalty kill forces a breakaway for himself. He gets tripped by Nick Schmaltz. He gets a penalty shot in OT. And Hronik tries the fake slapper into a far side drive, but he's not able to go by and beat Connor Ingram. Ingram didn't bite at all on the fake slap shot that Hronik tried on the penalty shot. And as the game continues, it becomes four on four because the Besser penalty expired. And this is where Dylan Genther sends the puck in front for Logan Cooley. Backdoor play. Teddy Bluger loses his guy. And that is the end of the game. Four to three is the final score here for Arizona in an important telltale game that puts the Vancouver Canucks just slightly, slightly ahead of the Edmonton Oilers still. This morning, the Canucks had a five-point lead on the Edmonton Oilers, but with the Oilers beating Vegas and the Canucks losing in overtime, that gap has shortened down to four points. Vancouver has two more games played, so the Oilers, if they win out, they could very well tie Vancouver. The next game for the Canucks, though, on Saturday, it's against Edmonton, so this will be the game that might decide whether or not Vancouver plays the third spot in the Pacific or the second wild card. Whether it's LA or it's Nashville, we will see. But this game against Arizona, this was one of those kind of off-putting, strange games because as we've been talking about the past few weeks against these weaker teams, the Canucks will get up on their opponents on the deserve to win meter in terms of the expected chances and the possession times and everything. They'll be good and far away ahead of their opposition, but they just cannot convert. I don't know if it's like they're just playing these good goalies or whatever, but against Lucas Dostal, against Connor Ingram, they just cannot find ways to consistently dominate on the score sheet. They're finding ways to put everything in their favor, but they just can't put the puck in the back of the net. And a game like this against Arizona was such a big example of that. If you watch the first few periods, they had their chances. They just could not 
really test Ingram too hardly. Coyotes are just good at making the Canucks' lives difficult despite the Canucks having the zone advantage. But either way, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about the Canucks slowly, slowly choking away this lead against Edmonton in the standings and how a game like this against Arizona was the biggest and craziest game so far. I hope you enjoyed this video, Ash Rolls 99, and bye.